Hey guys, today we are going to have a crack at Linux Mint. This is the Cinnamon Edition, version 21.3. Now, I've never actually tried any version of Linux Mint, but I've heard good things. I know it's a very friendly Linux distro that's aimed primarily for desktop use. Right away from the live CD, the attention to detail is obvious. I'll have the video speed up through the install process in the background, and it'll just keep yapping on as it does its thing. Now we just ticked a box to enable multimedia codecs, which I believe is an option, which enables non-free elements similar to NVIDIA drivers and such on other distros. That's a good sign. I understand some distros like to keep things free and non-proprietary, but that is usually at the expense of its users. So right away, we know what Linux Mint is going to be about. So Mint comes in three flavors. Cinnamon, of course, which is a fork of GNOME. Also Mate, which is an older fork of GNOME 2 and XFCE. I'm told there was a KDE version, but they no longer do that. Linux Mint is also based on Ubuntu, so I'm expecting good things. Now also interesting is that I'm installing this on an old MacBook Pro from 2014. Yes, I bought it off Facebook Marketplace recently for 150 Australian dollars. It's a bit slow running OS X, but still very good with Linux. I'm hoping to use it as a laptop to muck around with and try a few different installs. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a Linux on MacBook video. It's probably a bit boring to most people, but I actually love watching install screens. You can tell a lot about the OS itself by the effort put into the filler screens. There's a few Spotify and YouTube apps being highlighted, which I think shows they are trying to make users from Windows or Mac feel at home. I generally think there's two types of Linux distros, those that are unashamedly Linux, which don't make any excuses and purely focus on users who are already at home with Linux. And then there's the more comfy Linux distros like Linux Mint, which try to bring new users into the fold and generally try to keep the jump from Windows or Mac as easy as possible. Hardware support on the MacBook will be interesting. I have Debian installed on a different partition on the same device, and I needed to manually install drivers for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I have read that Ubuntu generally supports the device that this MacBook comes with, so let's see how it goes. Okay, so with the magic of editing, we now fast forward to the installed system. Initial impressions are great. We have some nice little notification icons here. Right clicking on the desktop gives us a familiar menu with the usual suspects, except for add desklets. These look like a series of widgets we can add to the desktop. Let's see what this does. Starting with the clock. Not bad. I actually don't mind that. It could be useful if you need to know times across multiple countries or time zones. The weather widget thinks we are in London for some reason. Let's see, I'm pretty sure I put in Melbourne at the install step. So I might just put that in the too hard basket for now. It looks like there's a few widgets you can download if you'd like to. So these icons look very slick. Custom Firefox icon and terminal shortcuts. I have no idea why they picked these three specific applications to use as the shortcuts. I would have gone with Software Center or something instead of the terminal. The terminal is definitely more of an advanced tool. This is a great menu. We've got the applications categorized here, somewhat similar to XFCE, but more polished. We have some, I guess, shortcuts here on the left, system preferences, and power off and log out buttons. A couple of graphical applications here. No GIMP for some reason, that's practically a crime. Under internet, we have Firefox and Thunderbird. We have hex chat and transmission. We also have LibreOffice Suite installed. We have the Media Codec installer from earlier, as well as Rhythmbox and a couple of other players.
Now, preferences and administrations seem to have a lot of tools. I want to try this device manager tool and see what it can do. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the MacBook Wi-Fi needed to be manually installed on the other distro I've tried. Let's see if this is any better. I should say that I have a USB Wi-Fi dongle plugged in. That's what I'm running with right now. Okay, I'm officially impressed. It found the right device, Broadcom Wi-Fi device it is. This is the first distro that auto magically found my device and gave me the option to just install the right drivers with a couple of clicks. Big points to Linux Mint. So we shall proceed. Hopefully it won't be a very large download. On to the most important bit, the themes. Very OS X and Windows inspired, options for light and dark mode, and also an auto mode. There's also a set of options, styles. The changes look quite different. Really nice tweaks to the user interface with a few clicks. This makes it very easy for the user, no editing of config files needed, or installation of a tweak application, that the default GNOME desktop requires you to. Let's see what the advanced button does. Icons. Whoa. That's a lot of options, lots of different colors and styles. Great job, Linux Mint. It looks like they even have an option to download custom themes not included with the initial distro. It is, however, taking a bit to complete its update though. While it does that, Let's check out the file browser. Looks somewhat similar to the GNOME files application, but that is to be expected. Our themes download has completed. Yes, it does look like it's a series of community themes that can be installed. The file browser is called Nemo. I'm sure that's a pun on the GNOME's initial Nautilus file browser. It looks nice and easy to use. I'd say it's a nice midway between XFCE and GNOME's default file browser. Now I wanted to check out Linux Mint's software manager. It does come with both Synaptek Package Manager, which is a more powerful and advanced tool, but I think Software Manager is geared to the newer Linux user. It's good to know you have both options available. It looks similar to other software installers on Ubuntu or Fedora. Nothing too amazing, but a simple interface to easily add new software. I do like the applications they have featured on the front page. Lots of well-known items people will be looking for. Oftentimes, on other distros, you need to go digging for apps like Steam or Blender, but it's right here, front and center. Okay guys, we have at last found the background tool. In summary, I think Linux Mint is a very, very easy to use distro. There were a few quirks, but I don't think I would hesitate to recommend it to anyone wanting to move from Windows or Mac to Linux. Some of its tools, like the device driver installer, is super useful for the beginner user. It also has a great level of polish in the user interface. Overall, a great ride. Well guys, like and subscribe. Until next time, 